Hey guys, Stealth17 here, and today we're going to be discussing US Marines in Wargame Red Dragon. The US Marines have a very powerful deck. They don't have the best ATGM equipment, but they're very well rounded as a specialization, and that's what makes them so formidable. So let's dive right into it. Logistics is nothing special. Since we're only using the US for this deck, we get a little more availability, and that means we get 7 command vehicles of the cheap kind instead of 6. You can choose here between the M151A1CP, which is the standard jeep, or the Humvee. Humvee is a lot better, because if you look at it, the off-road speed of the Humvee... Let me compare them. Hang on. This one and this one. The Humvee is armed. Now, this is nothing special. But if you look at the M151, it's the off-road speed of 55 versus 90 on the Humvee, which means that it has a lot more speed, it can get a lot faster to the capture zones which are not easily accessible by roads, and it means that it can get off the road into cover a lot faster than this one. So this is why I chose this one. They're 10 points more expensive, but well worth it in my opinion. Next I got the CH-53 resupply chopper. These are the huge choppers which carry 3700 liters of supplies. Work these on the outskirts of towns to resupply infantry, use them to repair tanks or resupply um, supply eating vehicles like the Pip Hawks. An FOB to top it all off, and 35 cargo t or 15 M35 cargo trucks to make sure that I can supply stuff which is in town which is a lot harder to safely reach with a helicopter. Finally I have the TECOMs or the infantry command squads in a UH. 21 hun sorry, twin hunt UE, and this will allow me to quickly capture zones on the other side of the map, which will allow me, hopefully, to bring in resupplies from that side. Next, let's talk Marines. We got two slots or two cards of US 90, US Marines 90 version. These guys have the better version of the machine gun. If you compare these to the standard marines, you got the Colt SMG versus the Mini-Me, or the Colt SMG heavy machine gun versus the Mini-Me. Here you can see them compared. They have the same specs all over the board except for this, which is the rate of fire. And this is important because this means that the Marines 90 can get a lot more uh, bullets down range than the standard marines. And that their rocket launcher has a better, a little better range than the standard one, at 350 meters more, which can really save your life. Accuracy is 10% better, which is nothing special, and AP power is 13. So only use these guys to get side shots on tanks. Don't take them head on, or try to get light vehicles in their crosshairs. I bring these guys in one card in the LVTP 7A1. This is the marine vehicle, which has very good armor on the front side. Three front, two sides, two back, and one top. Which means they carry a decent amount of protection, and they come with a grenade launcher. Now the grenade launcher is really effective at killing infantry en masse, and also to stun tanks using their HE value. They will never destroy a tank outright. You're going to need some heavier firepower for that. I also bring in marines in the twin Yui. This way I can quickly do a couple of land grabs at the start of the game or open up flanking maneuvers using marines in helicopters to open up a second front on the side. The same thing goes for the SMAWs. These are the anti-tank teams of the US Marines. I have one of these cards in the 7A1 LTPs, which is the marine landing vehicle, or um, the UEs, which give me a lot of flexibility in how I want to bring these guys in. You could argue that it's better to bring them all in in UEs, and you'd be half right, because UEs give you a lot more flexibility, but you only get three cards of UEs per game, or per deck, so it's not really that flexible, and you want to have them for the command infantry, for some marines, and that's why I chose one card of SMAWs in the UE, and one in the vehicle with the grenade launcher. Next I have Delta Force. Delta Force is still not that great. They're still not up to par with, say, um, the Swedish Special Forces 
or the Royal Marines or any of the other special forces in the game but they're really effective at taking out infantry using their MP5 SD submachine gun and they have an anti-tank weapon to defend themselves against light vehicles you can use these as designated or dedicated infantry killers in towns or you can use them to skirt behind the enemy lines I bring these in in a frog which is the smaller version of the Chinook so that they have a lot of protection and can go around the map very quickly next I have two cards of stingers one of four veterans and one of seven hardened they both come in the Humvee because I ran out of UEs these guys have a very good accuracy a decent range against helicopters a decent HE power and six missiles so these are going to be the main defense against helicopters when you're doing urban combat next we got the support category here I chose to bring two M1 and M110A2s instead of the M109A2s reason for this being is that whenever I want to use artillery I use it to actually snipe stuff I want to kill stuff instead of stun a large area I use this infantry piece to destroy stuff like anti-air units sometimes artillery if I have a general direction or you can snipe command vehicles with them now if you start comparing these things you'll notice that the dispersion on the M109 versus the M110 is a lot worse this thing is almost twice as accurate and provided yeah they have a lot less ammo so you need to keep these things right next to the FOB compared to these things which have 36 rounds use them as snipers I have two of these so that they have a hardened veterancy which even further decreases their dispersion but you could go for three and set up a mini artillery battery for close artillery support I bring the LAVMs these are the landing vehicles with a mortar and they're called the mortar carriers of the Marines extreme rate of fire at 25 rounds a minute that's why they also carry a hundred rounds so you hardly ever run out of ammo with these things good dispersion of only 2700 meters decent HE power to stun stuff kill stuff um, but don't use them against tanks you can only stun those not kill them so go after command vehicles groups of infantry or use them to smoke a position prior to attacking keep in mind that you can really relocate these things very quickly with their 100 km um, per hour off-road speed so if these things are threatened or if you want fire support somewhere else quickly use move fast and they will go first on the road and then off the road and they'll be there in a uh, blink of an eye <coughs> next is your standard air defense four chaparrals good against helicopters excellent range against them only carry or they do carry 12 missiles but they're kind of expensive at 70 apiece that's why I also bring seven cards of Avengers and these Avengers come with eight missiles excellent accuracy a lot less range than the chaparral but their missiles are a lot cheaper so you can resupply these things a lot faster and for less supply than you would the chaparral they're also less high value targets at only 45 and you can bring in seven versus four chaparrals finally I have the pip hawk which is my main defense against airplanes 9 HE power will definitely stun a plane and almost outright kill it depending on the amount of hit points it has only carries three missiles though and once these things are gone they take a long time to reload especially if you take them from a supply and they eat supplies like crazy so the moment you use these you're going to be using a lot of Chinooks or in this case the CH-53 or the cargoes to make sure that these things are supplied and that they can keep firing I don't really use a lot of tanks in this deck because I mainly use this deck when I'm fighting in urban areas such as the Wonson Harbor map if I do need a tank I have three M181HC Abrams this is the marine version of the Abrams tank excellent frontal armor good rate of fire good AP power and very good accuracy these things can take a beating and they can dish it out as well but they're expensive and you only get three of them so be very careful when and where you use these make sure they're well protected by another ring of units such as a layer of M60A1 ARA tanks 
pretty good accuracy for a tank. Um, not a very good stabilizer, so make sure that if these things fire, they're stopped. And the best way to do this is by using um, an attack move. They have some frontal armor, but they're not going to win any slugfests with heavy tanks. So make sure that if you engage a heavy tank, you use the Abrams. If you're engaging lesser tanks, say medium tanks and vehicles, go after them with the ERA. Then there's the recon category. I have seven hardened M H1 uh, AH1J Cobras. These are very good scout helicopters. They're small, which means that means that they're harder to hit. They have some missiles, but they're not very accurate. And I use these as spotters and hunter killer teams in combination with the helicopters you have on the other tab. <coughs> Next, I have the Navy Seals. I have two cards of these, one coming in Humvees to clear towns together with Delta Force. I found that these guys are very effective at it using their grenade launcher. And I use the frog version to scout forests, scout front lines, or perform uh, flank attacks or attacks behind enemy lines. Keep in mind though that Navy SEALs carry a grenade launcher. Grenade launcher does not do as much HE or even AP damage as a standard rocket launcher carried by infantry. So these things are very effective against infantry, but they will be struggling against even light vehicles. So make sure that you use these as spotters or infantry killers, but not vehicle killers. Combine them with Delta Force if you want to do that. Next I have some LAV-25 scouts, and I use these in combination with my tanks to uh, form a small ground attack force. These guys are the eyes, the guns on the tanks are the fists, and together they can really make a hole in the enemy line so you can force some more marines through. In the vehicle category I have the FSV. This is basically the bad optics version of the scout vehicle. They're actually the same vehicle, same gun, except that this thing has good optics and this thing doesn't. Also they cost you 10% or 10 points less, which means that you can field a lot more for them and they come at an availability of 13 at the hardened veterancy. You can use these things with their excellent accuracy for an LAV or for an FSV really to attack light vehicles and infantry and these things can kill tanks or can kill infantry whereas tanks are less suited for that. Then I have the LAV AT. This is a dedicated ATGM carrier. Very accurate, good missile, decent AP power and I use these to counter tanks. Zippos are the napalm tanks from the marines. If you have a town and Delta Force can't clear it very quickly, use these things and the town is pretty much flushed out right away. And finally I have the Humvee tow carrier. These things are a lot cheaper, or about, sorry, they're just as cheap or as expensive, whatever you like, as the LAVIT, but the missile they carry is a bit better. I use these as heavy tank snipers, as in they snipe heavy vehicles such as 100 point plus tanks, because they have a good AP power, good off-road and on-road speed, so they can get to their destination very quickly, try to get a flanking shot on a heavy tank, and with one or two missiles from a 50 point vehicle, you can kill a 100 point plus vehicle very quickly. In the helicopters, I have three Super Cobras and seven Sea Cobras. The difference between these is that the Super Cobra come with Stingers, or the M9M missiles, which is an anti-helicopter missile, and even anti-plane if you need it, whereas the standard Sea Cobras come with a rocket pod. Use these things as tank killers slash helo killers, and these things for basically everything else. These things can kill tanks because I have an ATGM, and they carry 8 missiles, but the accuracy uh, or the AP power is not that good. If you want, you can use the Seahawk. I've never found much use for these except as supply eating machines. They carry the Hellfire, which is a very high AP, very high accuracy missile, anti tank missile. They only carry four of these and they're 80 apiece, which means they're very expensive. They're also very quick, so you can take a card of these but you'd have to trade out either 
couple of cards in the plane section, uh, lose some vehicles, or lose one of these helicopters. And I found this combination of the two Cobras to be much better than one card of Sea Hawks. Then there's the air section. In here I have a good variety of air since the Marine Corps or the Marine Specialization deck gets one point planes after you spend the first four. I have the AVHB Harrier 2. These are my most used planes at the moment in the Marine deck because they carry the ATGMs which do 30 AP damage. They can pretty much kill any tank outright. Good air detection, good speed and I found these things to be effective against pretty much anything that's in the air. They're a little harder to target against helicopters but they're very effective against planes and I've even used these to shoot down air superiority fighters. Next is the Phantom, the F4S Phantom 2. Again, two air-to-air -air missiles, which is basically the same version as the Harrier. Harrier's version is a little better. But I use these things to flush out towns because they carry eight napalm bombs. You can also use these to uh, create a smoke screen since napalm also blocks sight. And this thing creates smoke screens much faster than your LEVMs or mortar carriers could. So if you want to obstruct the enemy's view so you can flank around, use some of these things. Deploy smoke screen, but make sure that they are well protected because their ECM and their speed is not as good. So make sure that they go in along with a prowler, which is another plane I have in my deck. <coughs> these planes are the seat planes of the deck. That means that they can specifically target radar sources such as anti-air vehicles. They're very accurate, have a good AP power, and I found that in most cases one of these two missiles will hit. Which means that for a 110, plane, 110 point plane you have to hit twice. Say one time you hit a buck for 70 points and then you hit a Tungushka for 90 points and the plane has earned itself. It would be great if this thing had anti-air missiles as well. But since the rest of the units in the deck already have a lot of anti-air missiles on them, I think we can manage without. Next is the AVA Harrier. These things carry the bombs, whereas the B version carry the ATGMs. These things also come with anti-air missiles, but the accuracy is a lot less. So I would use these things only as a last resort in case you're going after air targets. What I do use these things for is to bomb infantry or vehicles, because they have a good HV value of 15 and they come with two 500 kilogram bombs. If you drop these on a couple of blocks of um, or city blocks and then assault them with Delta Force or the Navy SEALs, they're going to be cleared up pretty quickly. Then there's the A4F Skyhawk 2. These are the carpet bombers, especially effective against infantry, not so much against vehicles, or at least not as much, not as effective as the AV8 Harrier. Because if you compare these two, this HE power is 5 points higher than this one and that's because these bombs are half the weight. So make sure that you use these against infantry groups and since they're only 45 apiece they really only have to hit a commando unit or a, shock tro um, a troop of shock infantry to really earn themselves back. Since they're also carrying very few bombs you can use these things almost all the time since they're very quick to rearm, resupply and repair. Lastly, I have the Hornets. <coughs> these are my endgame planes. I use these in combination with the Harriers, but the Harriers don't have a good survivability as these things do. If you compare these, you can see that the Harriers carry two missiles, which are semi-active, so they need to be seen. The Harrier needs to be able to see the target, where the Hornet C has the Fire and Forget missile. They also carry four of these, but for uh, the rest it's the same missile. Carry the same missiles for anti-air purposes as the Harrier which is the M9M so you can also use these as an air superiority fighter. I don't really have any of those in my deck but I found that I haven't really needed them much since the Pip Hawk can take out planes from afar and you can use two or three Harriers or one or two Sea Hornet or um, 18 Sea Hornets to go after any plane you can spot. 
exceptional air detection, good speed, so make sure you use these things over flanks as well. Fly them in from the sides, fly, fly them in from behind an enemy line, and try to get heavy tanks from the side or rear. In the naval section I use these guys as a landing force to open up a second front. Uh, for this purposes I use a Lafayette for um, pounding stuff into submission first. They have a very long range cannon, provided it's not as long a range as the Congo. But with this thing you get a 6 km um, range ship, which has 300 rounds. Whereas now I can have two ships with 4.7 km range, carrying 480 rounds. And they fire these things very quickly at 40 rounds a minute. That means if you have these things on full auto and they see targets all the time, they're going to be depleted in 6 minutes. So make sure you have some way to supply these things. Currently I don't use an LCU, so that's the supply ship. But if you're really going for a landing force or a naval, uh, a coast supporting force, which is very handy in maps like Tropic Thunder or uh, another D-Day in Paradise, that's when you want to provide these things with an LCU so they can keep firing. Next, I have two Tomcats. These are the air superiority fighters from afar. Send these out one by one over your base so you have always some extreme range air protection. They fire these missiles two at a time, which means that they can be used very effectively to shoot down planes from an extreme range. Finally, in the ship section I have the Monitor 10S or 105. Um, I use this ship as an artillery battery, a floating artillery battery. <coughs> Sorry, they're only 50 apiece. And I've decided to bring in eight of these at the rookie level. You can also bring in four of these at the elite level. But I think that the more the merrier in this case, because they're pretty accurate already, so long as they can see a target, I've noticed. They carry two auto cannons. They don't have a lot of armor. Um, they do have quite a bit of strength, so they can take some punishment. You could send these guys up a river if you'd really want to, but they're not that well protected. So the best use for these things is as an artillery battery to support coastal landings. Then the actual landing force provided um, consists of M61, M60 A1 ERA tanks. We've already seen these in this section, and this is just the naval version of it. It's exactly the same tank, and these things come in barges so that you can float them in. I've taken 10 of these at the hardened level because I want them to survive and I want them to be stunned for as little time possible and the harder or the more veterancy they have the less they are going to get stunned which means that they can probably get to cover a lot quicker or quicker than the trained versions can. Next Marines in a Marine deck naturally. These guys are the landing force in the infantry form the same version as the Marine 90s and these things come in barges which then offload these LAVs which you can then use to storm a coast. For recon purposes I have the SEALs and the V-150. This gives them some protection. The other options you have are the Humvee or the M35 which both have zero protection and no machine guns on them or none to speak of. But the best thing is to offload these guys very quickly get this vehicle to bushes or a town if you want to clear a town with them and offload the seals because that way the seals are the least vulnerable. Then there's anti-air defense. You can use these things in tandem with the Lafayettes which have an incredible anti-air range against airplanes and helicopters at 3500 meters, 80% accuracy. But the moment you start pushing in further inland you want these things to provide anti-air. These have a good range against helicopters, which is going to be the main threat. And airplanes they're not that good at, but you have the Tomcats circling near your area of operation. So these things will take out the planes, and these things will take out the helicopters. And then lastly, I have two M60A1s. These are the command tanks, and I use these guys when I'm landing a force as the very last element which lands so that I can immediately bring in resupplies or new units from that flank. 
Of course this has to be used in a resupply zone, as in a spawn point. But I found that most of the naval landings land at or near a spawn point. And those zones are probably going to be very debated, as in uh, you're going to see a lot of challenge in them. You could use the M151, it has zero armor, same goes for the Humvee. The LAV has some armor, but these things come very heavily armored at 9 frontal armor, 4 side, 2 back and 2 top. And they have a gun in case of emergency. So I use these things to actually capture the zone and bring in new uh, units from there. And from that zone, of course, I can bring in more Humvees to capture other zones nearby. So this is my marine deck. I'll leave the code so you can import it in the description. Let me know what you think. I've used these decks quite a bit and I really like the Marines. I think they're one of the most well-rounded versions. But of course there are always improvements to be made or different play styles. So let me know what you think in the comments. And if you like the video, please hit the like button on the top. Okay, thanks for watching and very good luck on the battlefield.